Okay, so our next, next speakers are uh, Lisa Silvia Colombo, Manuela Pato Pereira, Elisa Delivers, and the talk is Empathy Practice for Veterinary Students and Pets. So, good, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. First of all, I give you some background. In recent years, there has been an increasing attention to animal welfare, not only in regards to pets, but also farm animals and research animals. And there has also been a growing interest in the human-animal bond. And this has led to research on factors influencing the human-animal interactions. And three factors appear to be of particular importance, which are empathy, gender, and belief in animal mind and sentience. I think that now you know what is empathy, but uh, I can give you uh, a definition. So uh, empathy is the ability to understand and share others' emotions, and uh, it has been defined as a vicarious affective response uh, that arises from attending another individual's emotional experience and is more appropriate to another situation than one's own. And empathy is important because the understanding of other suffering leads to a negative experience which may promote prosocial behavior or the behavioral effort to alleviate the distress of others and promote their welfare. And empathy is very important in the matter of spring bond, in social living, and for the prevention of aggressions. Empathy uh, is also characterized by a gender effect so that females are usually more empathic than males and this has two possible explanations. One is an evolutionary explanation according to which empathy evolved in the context of parental care facilitating mother's responsiveness to offspring's needs. The other one is a social explanation which has to do with gender conditioning and so uh, there are social expectations and kind of education uh, so that women are expected and brought up to have a caring and nurturing attitude toward others. Empathy is particularly important in a helping or caring professions which are those professions that address the problems of, of, of peoples, but also of animals, physical, psychological, or emotional well-being. For example, uh, human medicine, psychology, and nursing, or uh, social work, are usually recognized as helping professions. But uh, recently, also uh, veterinary medicine, especially in the practice with the companion animal, has been recognized as a helping profession. And uh, in these professions, empathy has two sides of the coin. Because on one side, empathy may be a tool for alleviating the distress of others and promote their welfare. But on the other side, empathy may be a source of personal distress, so that in response to empathy, people may use defensive strategies of affective control. As a tool, empathy has been linked to many uh, issues, such as uh, good attitudes toward patients, reduction in malpractice litigation, competence in history taking and physical examinations, patient satisfaction, better therapeutic relationships, and good clinical outcomes. And this both in human medicine and in veterinary medicine. But uh, it's well known that uh, physicians, nurses, and vets are at risk of burnout, which is a psychopathological condition characterized by the depletion of internal emotional resources, which occurs when uh, an individual steadily provides care uh, to another individual who is experiencing an emotional situation, feeling empathy for them and trying to lessen their pain. And uh, so in this situation, people uh, may use defensive strategies and so uh, empathy declines. Moreover, health and professions are undergoing a process of uh, feminization. So uh, most people who uh, enter the process of uh, medicine, the 
maternity uh, or nursing. Nowadays are female, and uh, as we have seen before, uh, females are usually more empathic uh, than men, than males. Veterinary medicine represents a particular case of ethnic professions because, uh, especially in companion animal practice, vets have to care both for animals and their owners. So uh, they have to show empathy towards uh, both the human clients and uh, the non-human patient at the same time. And uh, in this profession, empathy appears to be uh, very important. Uh, on the human side, uh, it has uh, been noticed that uh, uh, it's very important for vets uh, to appreciate the bond between caregivers and their pets. And uh, uh, this makes uh, veterinary care uh, to be surrounded by emotional issues uh, which cause vets to interact often with people in situations that require them. On the animal side, uh, it has been suggested that uh, in diagnostics, uh, a caring approach may be a tool to detect signs of suffering and pain. And for example, it has been demonstrated that empathic vets score animal's pain higher. And uh, finally, it has been suggested that uh, caring vets could be more likely to use the analgesics to avoid suffering in patients. And uh, for this reason, uh, for, uh, for the fact that uh, vets have uh, to provide empathy both uh, for humans and for animals uh, at the same time, recently veterinary medicine has been recognized as one of the most caring professions. But uh, what happens to empathy in these professional settings, and so in care professions? We have two examples. One is uh, from human medicine, and uh, it has been demonstrated that uh, medical students' empathy declines during medical schools, while physicians' empathy varies with specialization and gender, so that females, again, are more empathic than males. In, uh, there is no uh, agreement about the role of age or length of career since uh, some studies found uh, that uh, empathy declines uh, uh, with the length of career probably for the process of burnout or habituation to suffering while other studies found uh, no effect or found the opposite effect uh, so that uh, one study uh, found that uh, older doctors uh, are more empathic than uh, younger doctors. And so uh, this is a matter of debate. If we look uh, at veterinary medicine, we, found, uh, we find more or less uh, the same results. So uh, students' empathy toward animals drops as they proceed in their university course, and uh, the same effect emerged also in regard to belief in animal mind. And uh, again, females are more empathic than males and have a stronger belief about animal sentience. In regards to vets, we have few data about uh, qualified vets. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, there is uh, only one study uh, which was uh, about uh, empathic communication and uh, uh, they found that uh, in about 60% of appointments, uh, empathic statements uh, were not expressed toward either the client or the patient. And so, uh, vets uh, seem not to be so empathic. But, uh, but uh, let's come to our research. We performed two studies. Uh, the first study was, study was about veterinary students and uh, our aims were to carry out the first study on empathy in veterinary students in Italy in order to make comparisons with data emerging from other countries, to evaluate the effect of education by comparing first and last year students to evaluate the role of gender and uh, to investigate the relationship between empathy and belief in human animal continuity. Study 2 was about qualified vets and uh, we wanted to investigate empathy towards animals and humans in Italian vets, evaluating whether they are influenced by gender and age or length of service. 
So uh, now I present you the first study, uh, which is about veterinary students. First of all, uh, I want to give you um, some uh, um, some background about uh, what means studying veterinary science in Italy. As in other countries, uh, veterinary curriculum is very concerned uh, with natural and life sciences, uh, and uh, in. Uh, in the faculty in the University of Milan is uh, very concerned with uh, farm animals and with animal production. And uh, therefore, students uh, learn a lot about biology, anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, and so on, but they receive just a smattering of animal behavior and comparative recognition. And uh, moreover, students have little contact uh, with pet owners. So during uh, their clinical activities, they have contact with uh, heel animals, but not uh, with animals owners. And uh, uh, finally, differently from uh, uh, some other countries, uh, here in Italy, students don't perform any animal experimentation for didactic purposes. So uh, our hypothesis uh, on the basis of uh, the structure of veterinary curriculum and of uh, the results of uh, previous uh, studies uh, are that the veterinary curriculum may have a negative impact on students' perception of human-animal continuity and on empathy towards animals and that females may be more empathic than males. We uh, focused on uh, emphasis toward animals uh, because uh, during uh, the university course, uh, uh, veterinary students uh, uh, have contact with animals, but not uh, uh, with pet owners. Empathy towards animals has been seen as a side effect of empathy toward humans, which is triggered by animal signals, behaviors, or physical features which are similar to those of humans. And so, in order to empathize with animals, it seems that we have to perceive some similarities between their appearance, mind, behavior, emotions, and ours. And, uh, uh, for instance, it has been demonstrated a correlation between belief in animal mind and empathy towards animals. And so, we can say that empathy requires to perceive some degrees of continuity between animals and us, in terms of operational capacity, evolutionary history, physical appearance, or behavior. To uh, reach our goals, we used uh, these materials and methods. So, uh, first of all, a general questionnaire about uh, age, gender, religion, eating habits, and uh, pet ownership, since uh, all these variables uh, may have an impact uh, on empathy. Then uh, we used uh, the animal empathy scale uh, by Paul, which measures empathy toward animals, and uh, higher scores mean higher empathy. And finally, we used uh, the human animal continuity scale to measure to which extent uh, animals and humans are viewed on the same continuum or in a dichotomous way. The author of this scale uh, reports, uh, reported the three factors evolutionary continuum, animal rational capacity, and human's superiority versus equality. Participants were uh, veterinary students from the University of Milan, and the final sample comprised 261 students, 121 were first-year students, and 140 were fifth-year students. As uh, you can see in this graphic, uh, most students uh, were females, and uh, this uh, is in line with the data about feminization of veterinary professions. In regards to the other variables, uh, just uh, a small percentage of students were vegetarians or vegans, and uh, almost all students uh, were pet owners, and so we excluded uh, these two variables, uh, diet and uh, pet ownership, from the following analysis. We also examined the uh, uh, questioner's internal consistency, and we found that uh, uh, the animal empathy scales 
had a good internal consistency and uh, this means uh, that uh, it's uh, a good instrument uh, to uh, investigate empathy. And so we performed analysis on global score, but uh, we find a poor internal consistency uh, for the human animal continuity scale and so uh, we performed analysis on uh, single items. So these are our first results. We found an effect of both year, of course, and gender on the, uh, the animal empathy scale scores. In particular, we found that uh, fourth year students were more empathic than last year students, and that females were more empathic than males, both in the fourth and in the last year of course. In regards to the human animal continuity scale items, uh, we focused on these items. The first is about animal rational capacity, and so humans can think but animals cannot, while the other three are about uh, an instrumental attitude toward the animals, and are uh, the needs of people should always come before the needs of animals. It's okay to use animals to carry out tasks for humans and it's crazy to think of an animal as a member of your family. And we found both an effect of year of course and gender on items related to an instrumental view of animals. And so fifth year students and male students had uh, a more instrumental attitude toward animals than uh, fourth year students and uh, females. And uh, we found also an effect of gender uh, about belief uh, in animal rational capacity, uh, so that uh, females were uh, more convinced than males on uh, animals' uh, thought abilities. And finally, we found a correlation between the animal empathy scale scores and uh, scores at uh, the human animal continuity scale items related to an instrumental view of animals. So that the more students have uh, an instrumental attitude toward animals, the less uh, they are empathic with animals. And uh, so what we can say is that uh, our results are in line with those uh, of other countries and uh, females are more empathic than males and uh, females tend to view animals and humans on the same continuum showing a greater belief in animal suitability and a lesser instrumental attitude towards animals. And also in regards to veterinary education, our results are in line with the previous researches and it seems that veterinary education may have a negative impact on empathy since fourth year students are more empathic than their fifth year colleagues. And in particular, veterinary education seems to promote an instrumental view of animals which contributes to consider animals and humans in a dichotomous way. And uh, as we have seen, the more students tend to consider humans and animals as different, the less they show empathy toward them. And now uh, let's come to study two, and so the study on uh, qualified vet. Our hypothesis were that uh, since uh, qualified vets have frequent contact both with animals and people in situations that require empathy, empathy towards animals and people may vary as they proceed with their career. And in particular, uh, for a process of habituation to suffering or uh, for a process of burnout, empathy may decline in qualified vets, both uh, toward people and uh, toward animals. And uh, uh, females uh, should be more empathic than males. We use the these materials and methods, uh, the general questionnaire and uh, the animal empathy scale that uh, we used for the previous study, and uh, the empathy quotient by Baron Cohen uh, to measure empathy towards people, and uh, higher scores mean higher empathy. Participants were uh, 105 vets 
and uh, uh, we selected uh, our sample uh, in order to add uh, 12, 12 vets uh, in uh, four groups of uh, career land. And so group one were unexperienced vets who, who, were, uh, who had been working as vets for less than five years. Uh, group two were young vets who, um, whose career length ranged between five years and ten years. Group three were experienced vets who had been working uh, for a period ranging from ten to uh, twenty years. And finally, group four were older vets who had been working as vets for more than twenty years. These are the characteristics of the sample and uh, even if uh, uh, we selected our sample in order to have more or less the same percentages of men uh, and women, we found that uh, most younger vets were female and uh, most older vets were males. And uh, this is in line with the feminization of uh, veterinary medicine. In regards to the other variables, uh, almost all vets were pet owners, and just a small percentage were vegetar vegetarians or vegans, as in the students' sample. And so we excluded uh, these variables from the analysis. We found a gender effect on empathy, both on empathy toward animals, so that uh, female vets are more empathic with animals than male vets, and also uh, in empathy toward people. Uh, and again, females are slightly more empathic than males with, uh, with other people. Interestingly, we didn't find any effect of career, but uh, if we compare fourth-year students, uh, fifth-year students, and qualified vets, we uh, find a significant difference uh, between fourth-year students and qualified vets, and between fourth-year students and fifth-year students. And this uh, suggests that uh, veterinary education has an impact uh, on uh, empathy, and so empathy declines during the veterinary course, but uh, um, there is not uh, the same effect uh, of the professions. And so after graduation, empathy stops uh, uh, declining. Uh, and so uh, let's come to general discussion. We found that empathy declines during veterinary studies, and uh, there are three possible reasons. The first is that students use defensive strategies to reduce personal distress in response to exposure to animal suffering. Another explanation has to do with role modeling, and uh, we have to remember that uh, until a few years ago, veterinary medicine was considered a made preserve, and the culture promotes a detached attitude in males. And finally, in Italy, veterinary curriculum lacks uh, of in depth teaching in ethology and animal cognition and is more concerned with animal production. And uh, this may promote uh, an instrumental attitude toward animals, which has a negative impact on empathy. However, uh, we can remain optimistic because empathy seems to stop decreasing after entering the veterinary profession. And uh, both in students and in qualified vets, females are more empathic than males. And uh, veterinary medicine is undergoing a process of feminization also in Italy. And so probably in the future we will have more female vets and therefore more empathic vets. And however, empathy levels are quite high also in fifth-year veterinary students. And so uh, it seems that uh, veterinary curriculum um, 
has a negative impact on, uh, on empathy, but empathy remains on a acceptable level also at the end of the uh, university course. Finally, uh, we would like to uh, thank uh, uh, our colleagues, uh, and so Annalisa Pelosi and Franca Cripa for statistical analysis, Tessa Calderari for data collection, and Mariangela Bertini for her help in recruiting students. And finally, we thank all veterinary students and vets who kindly took part in the studies. And uh, last but not least, thank you for your attention.